Hi, my name is Josh Baiser from GameWisdom.com and welcome to this first of the series I like to call Gwent Guides. I'm going to take a look at, in the course of several videos, a look at each one of the factions currently in Gwent and talk a little bit about the popular cards currently in the game for new players joining so that if you start playing the game you'll have at least a rough idea of some of the things to expect and you won't be too confused. And let me know what you think about this series. If you're looking for a straight up beginner's guide to Gwent, that is not going to be the purpose of this video. But if you would like me to make one of those, definitely let me know in the comments below. So right now as we're talking, Gwent is currently in beta with five factions. And please keep in mind that whatever we're going to show here may not represent the current version of the game as CD Projekt Red has been making some grand changes to the game over the course of the beta. But we're going to start with Northern Realms. Right now they are certainly I think one of the more popular factions to play in Gwent at the moment. And the reason is that they have some really powerful card synergies. And typically if you can't upset them or upset their machinations you will lose because they're just so powerful and they just really can just dominate. But let's take a look at some of the popular cards that you'll probably be running into if you start playing Gwent. So let's start with our heroes up here. First one, Foltus. Basically he will copy any card on his side of the field that's a non-spying bronze unit. So, as I was saying, regarding how well the cards synergize with each other, this is very powerful. Because he can take any one of the cards we're going to talk about and make a duplicate of them. So instead of having three, he can have four. He can get another special effect on the field. And typically, if he uses it, you're going to be in big trouble. Radovid chooses three adjacent units, locks them, and does two base damage from them. This is a good counter to counter to boards that have a lot of special effects, but it hasn't been seen all that much, at least from what I've been playing. But our friend Henslet here, this is a biggie. Chooses 7 adjacent units on your side, converts all non-gold units to gold. Not only when they are converted to gold does this make them immune to most cards, but it raises their strength. As I just said, Northern Realms is really good at card synergies. And with their cards that gain power or perform an effect when a gold unit gets put onto their side, this can be devastating. We'll try and talk a little bit about some possible counters and strategies at the end of this video, but let's go now through the line here from bronze to gold, and we'll talk about some of the big ones that most likely you're going to see in the meta at the moment. Promote basically turns bronze units to gold. Chances are, if you're playing against a Henselt, Henselt, I'm sorry, they'll probably have a promote or two in their deck to synergize. Reinforcements, basically takes one bronze unit on their side and plays all instances of it. And as we're going to talk about, this can be very dangerous, either with Henselt here or Foltis. Reaver Scouts, Basically similar to reinforcement over here, you play them and then you can pick a bronze unit on your side and spawn or play another instance of them from your deck. Now this is the one that's going to make your life a living nightmare, the poor infantry. You play one and it spawns two base copies, so three essentially becomes nine. And since you can have three copies of this card in your deck, this basically gives you 27 might on your field. When you combine with some of the other cards, including our friend Henselt's ability, you can create 27 strength, or I'm sorry, you can get about 21 strength that cannot be removed. And if you can't stop this, it can really just wreck your match. Kaduini Kadweni, there you go, Siege Support, adds three, 3 strength to 2 non-gold units, just buffing units, getting them out of the range of easy attacks, or defending against cards that will either like Scorch or remove the weakest units. 
Reinforced Siege Tower. Again, synergizing with the gold card build strategy. Get these guys on your field, then turn the rest of your cards into gold, and you are in deep trouble. Another one that can be a nightmare to deal with, the Field Medic. Even though they cannot be resurrected, they will bring back a random bronze unit from the graveyard. This is one of the most dangerous things about Northern Realms, because if they have a dominant first round, they can then spend round two and resurrect all those annoying bronze cards that they just played to win, and it can easily just overwhelm you. Let's keep going down. Uh, this is the Siege Expert. Kadwani Siege Expert adds three strength to each non-goal machine played on your side. This is typically seen for builds that feature the trebuchets and other machines that, we're, that we've shown or will show. Reaver Hunter. Symbol just keeps playing Reaver Hunters from your deck, a way of thinning it out, and adding a possible 15 might to the board, not counting buffs. The Blue Stripes Commando. Again, very similar. Play one down, it will boost the other ones in your hand or deck, and then you can summon more using some of your powers or reinforcement over here, and get just a massive buff. And then these two are going to be very much seen. Reinforced Ballista and Reinforced Trebuchet. Ballista removes one strength whenever a gold card appears on your side. So this is the one for gold decks. And this is the one that just removes one strength from a random opposing non-gold unit. This is just a nightmare to deal with. One is an annoyance. Two can be a threat. Three is a nightmare, and then if they use the hero power to duplicate, four is just a war crime, basically. And then if they turn them into gold, you just cannot remove them. And again, these can be resurrected. If the person is going for a gold-based strategy, they may also use the Rendian Elite. You play three of them, and they all turn to gold. Again, if they're can, they can copy them using our friend Foltis here, then they just need two to bring onto the field. Priscilla draws one non-card that you can see, one you can't, and then you can play them. And again, this is just the Northern Realm's way of getting card draw. Neck, neck, Neneki, there we go, resurrects a non-gold. Again, this can be a nightmare, because not only can they bring back bronze, but Neneki here can bring back silvers as well. So they can use this to, let's say, bring back Priscilla, or bring back any other silvers we'll talk about over the next minute. And again, one of the dangers of Northern Realms, if they have a very strong first round, they can almost copy it by resurrecting those annoying bronze cards that made your life a living hell during that round. Dan the line here, add two strength to each non-goal unit play on your side. Again, just one of those cards that if you leave him alone, he can easily cause a lot of trouble for you. And let's see. Oh, uh, this one, I'm not even going to pretend to try and pronounce that. Spawns a 2 strength whenever a gold card appears on your side. Again, synergizing with the gold build combo. And then we keep on going. Another way of getting card draw, this one you place it on the opposing side. Shiny. Resurrects a non-gold, non permanent death unit, and then turns it to gold. So, even if they resurrect something that you want to kill, you can't kill because it becomes gold. And again, this can be used with bronze and silvers. Philippe, Philippa plays a special card from your hand, and then you can draw a card afterwards. And then, the other big one that we've seen is Triss Butterfly Spell. Adds two to all non-gold units in your hand. Typically, she will be the first card played on the Northern Realm side. And again, this is very dangerous. It doesn't sound all that bad when you first look at it. But again, you have to realize, plus two means that these guys now become five. 
So instead of getting 9 with one card, you get 15. It also moves them out of Lassery territory. Again, plus 3 to our trebuchets takes them out of um, our the Thunder spell, Azur's Lightning, I think it's called. And again, this goes for everything that gets played. So uh, to wrap things up, in terms of strategies against Northern Realms, again, your main thing is you really need to win round one against them. Either win it or force them to overcommit. Because if they have an easy round one victory, they can just lay into you with round two. And again, they can resurrect most of their best cards, especially their more annoying bronze ones, for either a round two or round three. Cards that can banish are very useful. For me, I'm a Nilfgaard player. I like to use Letho, at least to some extent. But, again, it's just very important to disrupt them any way you can. But that can be very hard because they have many ways to counter that. If you try and lightning something, they can resurrect it. If you try and throw down a cow as Nilfgaard, they can put down a lower cost unit to counter it. But, again, the game is still in beta, so I'm sure CD Projekt is looking long and hard at Northern Realms to see anything they can do to hopefully shake up their machine here. But, for those of you watching this, if you are experts at Gwent, what do you think of Northern Realms, and are there any potential strategies that you've found that work well? Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. This is kind of a test bed to see if there's an interest in these kinds of videos here on the channel, let me know in the comments below. And if you guys are enjoying it, then I guess next time we'll either look at Scoidel or Monsters. But until then, be sure to like and subscribe and all that. And I will catch you all next time. Take care. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, share with your friends. It always helps out. For daily posts on all manner of game design and industry topics, check out game-wisdom.com. To support the site and everything that I do, be sure to check out the Patreon campaign. If we can hit goals, it will mean more content for everyone to enjoy, and I'll be able to support myself and my household. If you want to follow me, you can find me on Twitter at GWBicer for updates throughout the day and random thoughts from me. And lastly, you can find me on Twitch right over there at GW Bicer for daily streams most nights around 10 Eastern. Thanks again for watching the video, and be sure to check out more great content coming to the Game Wisdom channel real soon.